Here we're going to be looking at some of the properties of stars. We're going to start off by looking at what is a star. And we're going to talk about what fusion is and what mean sequence means and a little bit about hydrostatic equilibrium. But to bring it back to this one here, this little nursery rhyme, right? Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. And I have a new uh, little daughter. She was just born uh, this summer. So, of course, I've been singing this song to her. And we don't have to wonder what a star is. We know this now. Now, of course, this sort of ruins the song, right? I mean, if we say sort of what it is, I mean, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, then you could say something about, you know, a big ball of hydrogen fusion or something like that. It might be a little bit boring as a song. So maybe we'll just leave that for the little nursery rhyme, but uh, we'll actually learn what it really is. So a star is, what could we say here? Um, so a star is, let's say here, we could say it's a, well, it's a big, hot ball of gas. Maybe we'll say that. So it's a big, hot ball of gas. Um, and it's undergoing nuclear fusion. So this is why we call this astrophysics now and not just astronomy, because we're going to go into a little bit of the physics of what's going on here. So undergoing what we call nuclear fusion. I do not mean nuclear. Um, I've heard some Americans for some reason call it nuclear, and it's actually nuclear because it has to do with the nucleus. So undergoing nuclear fusion. This would be a good definition of what is a star. A star is a big hot ball of gas that's undergoing nuclear fusion. So what does this really mean? Um, this means that inside the star there's a lot of stuff going on and plus there's a lot of light. So we're going to go into a little bit more of the details of it. I think, uh, I think that might be a good idea. Uh, first of all, I thought I'd show you this little joke. This is actually, I think it's from the Perry Bible Fellowship. Um, so the sun says, I love you, and the earth says, I love you too. Oh, kiss me. And of course, when they kiss, everybody dies. Um, maybe it's a bit macabre, but here we go. Let's talk about what the main sequence is. So this is what goes on inside a star. So inside a star, here is what's happening. You're converting. Because uh, a star has mainly hydrogen gas. So you're converting hydrogen to helium. That's really what's happening. And that's what we call nuclear fusion. We call it fusion because you're taking light elements and making heavier elements. If you took heavier elements and made them lighter, we call that fission. But in this case, we have nuclear fusion. We're converting hydrogen to helium. I mean, here what's really happening then, if we sort of drew a star here, we would have sort of the core of the star here would be sort of hydrogen converting to helium. And then, of course, over here we would just have other layers of stuff. And of course, then what would happen is there's lots of light coming out. Uh, there's supposed to be yellow things right here. Maybe that's a little bit difficult to see. But in any case, light comes out. Now that's just a byproduct. I mean, what's really happening is there's lots of heat. It turns out it's giving lots of light. So light comes out and that reaches us. So we're on Earth here and we're happy because of this. So what really happens in here is uh, we have what's called the proton-proton cycle. Now you don't have to go into all the details of it, but uh, I'll do a video later on where I do go into the detail. But basically, you're taking you know, hydrogen one, so this is called, uh, well, this is a proton, and you're basically adding a hydrogen, and what you're doing is you're making what's called uh, deuterium, so that's H2, um, plus some stuff, plus energy. That energy is in the form of light. Whenever you make something new, turns out, if you know about uh, nuclear physics, Anytime you assemble an atom from its constituent parts, which is what you're doing here, you also have some of the mass is being converted to energy. So you have some energy released. And that's important, right? This right here is, this is released. So this, a lot of it is in the form of light. So energy is released. And of course, then you, so you go from hydrogen to H2. And of course, then you can actually go from H2 um, plus 1 hydrogen, that's going to give you what we call um, helium-3 plus um, some stuff plus some energy. 
And it turns out then if you take some helium-3, and it turns out if you take two of those, I mean, I'm doing plus stuff because later on we'll actually see the details. But for right now, it suffices to just say, well, you need, you basically need this process to happen twice. See, if this process happens once, you get one H2. And then you have an H2, which makes an HE3, helium-3. And then, of course, you need two of these helium-3s, which means this whole process here happens times two here. That happens twice. And then you basically have a helium-3 plus a helium-3 gives you uh, what's called helium-4 plus some stuff plus energy. So the key thing that happened is we started off with some hydrogen. I would dot dot dot, we do some stuff and end up with helium. So you see that it's not such a simple process. This is actually one of the PP cycles it's called and there's different branches of it and there's other things that go on inside. But the main thing is a star, at least a what we call a main sequence star, is a star that's happily burning hydrogen to helium. And that's happening in the center. So the hydrogen to helium fusion happens in the center or the core. So it happens in the star's core, in other words, in the center. And the energy that's released, maybe we'll add a little page here, the energy released This has this equation, which is the famous one that so many people don't know how to use, but it's actually E equals mc squared, which is Einstein's famous equation. Such a simple equation, and yet it's uh, very powerful. So of course E tells you, and maybe we should actually define it. Um, so E tells you the that it would be the energy that would probably be in joules. And M is actually called the mass defect, it turns out. So that's the difference in mass. That's like the, the mass that disappeared. So when you did this thing, if you sort of accounted for all the mass, some of it's missing, and it went to energy. So this mass is called the mass defect, and it's usually in kilograms, although it can be in other fancy units. And C is just the speed of light, uh, which is in meters per second. And it turns out C is actually 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So you take that big number and you square it and you multiply that by the missing mass and that tells you how much energy is released. Now what's important then is this. The energy released, at least some of it, is in the form of light. which we see. So that's why when we see the sun's light, which we see every day, um, when we see the light from the sun, uh, what we're seeing then is the result. We're seeing some of this energy that was released whenever we had this process happening here, when we had some hydrogens doing some fancy stuff being converted to helium, which is the next element up on the periodic table. So that is what's happening. So every time you have hydrogen to helium, you have E equals mc squared, and all this means is, therefore, the sun is bright. Right? Because there's lots of light being emitted from the sun. So when we ask at the beginning, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are, well, what's happening is in the center of the star, we have this process here. We have hydrogen being converted to helium, and when that happens, you get energy released. And that energy is in the form of light, at least the stuff that we're able to see. Lots of other things can happen with the energy, right? It's a form of heat, and all sorts of other things happen. But the important thing for us that makes the sun look bright is that some of it's in the form of light.